These are examples for section 4.2, SSS, and SAS congruence. We don't need all six parts of two triangles to prove that the two triangles are congruent if we have got two different kinds of tools. Certain combinations and patterns of corresponding sides and angles can be used to prove that two triangles are congruent. Two of these are the side 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 congruence postulate and the side angle side congruence postulate. In this video you will use the side 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 and side angle side postulates to prove that two triangles are congruent instead of having to use the definition of congruent triangles each time. Let's take a look at example one in example one, they want us to prove the two triangles are congruent here. Triangle LMN and triangle NLP or NPL. If you'll notice the name, <clears throat> the way they named the congruent triangles, they start with L and N. So one triangle, L, is corresponding with N and the other one, N, is corresponding with L. So again, triangle LMN is congruent to triangle NPL. So that would be something like this. L, M, N, and N, P, L. So this is the way there, one has been rotated around like this. It helps to plan when proving two triangles are congruent. It helps to plan them out a little bit before you proceed with the proof. So in, since we're trying to prove the two triangles are congruent, let's take our given information and see what we have at hand. And then based on that, we'll figure out whether we use SSS, SAS, or if we're going to have to go all the way and use the definition of congruent triangles. LM is congruent to NP over to your drawing and mark those. LM is congruent to NP. LM, NP. Also, they give us that LP is congruent to NM. LP is congruent to NM. Based on that, they want us to show or prove the two triangles are congruent. Notice we don't have any angles given to us that are congruent, but we do have two pairs of sides, so it would make common sense to try to go for using SSS instead of SAS, and because in SAS we've got an angle that we have to account for. There's no indication that any of the sides are parallel, there's no indication that any of the angles are right, so we can't assume any of that. So let's go with SSS. This was given to us. And we have our drawing marked. Next, we notice that we need the third side in both triangles. And the third side in both triangles is being shared. LN in one triangle is congruent to NL in the other triangle. So LN in one triangle is congruent to NL in the other triangle. Notice that these are turned around and the order does matter. For verification, come up to this proof statement and see if this works. L, N, N, L. You'll notice that the first one is L here, the first one's N here, the last one's N here, and the last one's L here. So that's this is why they're switched or turned around. But we're still naming the same segment. So this is the reflexive property of congruence. We marked our drawing and now we have everything we need to, sh to show that these two triangles are congruent by the side 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 congruence postulate. We can now state that triangle LMN is congruent to triangle NPL by the side 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 congruence postulate. Example 2. Again, it is important to understand how triangles correspond to each other in any given situation before planning a proof. 
What other information do you need to prove by the SAS congruence postulate that these two triangles are congruent? The SAS postulate. Remember the angle, the pair of angles that are congruent must fall in between or between the two sides that are congruent. <clears throat> so we start with this one and we notice that we're given in this drawing right here that EF side EF is congruent to side GD now if you need to you can split these triangles up and re redraw them I've taken EDF and have just uh, translated it down to this position but with this other triangle triangle FGD we have rotated it around to where G is now at the top, D is over here, and F is over down here. So we can kind of see how they match up or how they correspond to each other. Notice that EF is congruent to GD, not the other way around. Okay, so we've got one side, one pair of sides in both. We would need to show that another pair of sides are congruent. DF congruent to FD. And the reason why we chose this is because they're being shared in the two triangles. We have no indication that DE and FG are congruent, so we leave that alone. So this is DF is congruent to FD again like the previous example according to the reflexive property reflexive property of congruence so now we can show that DF is congruent to FD in both triangles if we're trying to use SAS we are going to need the angle that falls in between the two pairs of sides that are shown to be congruent. Down here that would be angle F and angle D congruent to each other. Here we're going to have to be careful to name the angles using three letters because F, vertex F has more than one angle and vertex D has more than one angle. So making sure that we name them the correct way we would have angle E, F, D <clears throat> that's EFD is congruent to angle can you tell which direction we would name that it was EFD so now we name the other one GDF this is what we would need to use SAS or side angle side congruence postulate to show the two triangles are congruent Example three, sometimes all we want to do is plan a proof. Practicing planning proofs can really benefit us when we're actually writing a proof, especially when the proofs get more comp complex or more complicated. For each pair of triangles, would you use SSS or SAS to prove the triangles congruent? If there is not enough information to prove the triangles congruent by SSS or SAS, write not enough information. Explain your answers. Starting with part A, we've got two triangles. It looks as though one has been reflected or flipped to show the other one. We've got two pairs of sides and we've got one pair of angles that are congruent. Notice where the angle lies in relation to the two sides that we have. It is between, so we can use side angle side here we have two pairs of corresponding sides congruent these and these and their included angle angles. 
the word included is what we use in place of between. The angle included is the angle between these two sides that are congruent. Those are congruent, so the included angles are congruent. And then a conclusion. So the triangles are congruent. The postulate we used, an explanation of how we got to that postulate, and a conclusion. Part B, we have two triangles where we have two pairs of sides are congruent. And we have one angle congruent in both triangles. At first you think maybe SAS will work, but at closer investigation, if you'll notice, this is a good setup for SAS because it's a, the angle is in between or included between the two sides that are marked. But over here, the angle is not between those two sides. There's no such thing as SSA. So, not enough info. There's two pairs of corresponding sides. We cannot use SSS. The congruent angle pair is not included, like I said. So, this one cannot work. Part C. We have two triangles. Again, it looks like one has been reflected off to get the other one. And this time we have a pretty clear picture. We have three pairs of congruent sides enabling us to use SSS. Explanation. All three pairs of corresponding angles, excuse me, sides, are congruent. Conclusion. So, the triangles are congruent. In part D, <clears throat> we have two triangles this time. They share a vertex. Notice that there are three pairs of congruent sides. Congruent. And there's two ways to do this one. One way is just by using all the given information and using SSS. Because we have all three pairs of sides. So SSS, three pairs of corresponding congruent sides. Therefore, the triangles are congruent. The other way is a little bit more involved. We can ignore the two sides that have three marks on them or three tick marks and just take a look at the angle that is included between the two other two congruent sides. This angle and this angle are congruent, not because they're given to us, but because we can use the vertical angles congruence theorem, their vertical angles. So we can say we could use SAS, two, pair, two pairs of corresponding congruent sides, we have and the pair of included angles by vertical angles congruence theorem. Conclusion, therefore, the triangles are congruent. Our last example shows that we can apply what we learn about proving triangles to real world situations. Structural engineering. The girders underneath the track of a proposed roller coaster are shown. These are the girders here and there's probably more but this is all we need. The engineering company designed these pieces of metal bars in a way to withstand great pressure as the roller coaster's weight bears down on the track. This is the track right here. 
The amusement park company wants to make sure this is true. The engineers claim that the strength of the girder design comes in part because of two triangles that are created. They're, they're congruent triangles. Prove that they are or are not correct, the engineering company. So, here we have this part of these, these girders right here. FG, we've got two triangles, and of course they're supported they support each other by this common side. FG is parallel to KL. So let's mark that on our drawing. FG is parallel to KL. <coughs> also, FG, segment FG or side FG is congruent to segment or side KL. So FG and KL are also congruent. This was all given to us. <clears throat> and then notice we've got our two triangles. And the way they wrote uh, the congruent statement here, F corresponds with K in one triangle and the other. So there's one has been rotated around where F in one triangle corresponds to K in the other one. G and L and then K and F just in, in, in the other direction. So it looks something like this. This is how they correspond to each other or are congruent to each other. Anyway, we were trying to prove that they're congruent. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and see what we can do here. We've got one side given to us, one pair of sides given us to us that are congruent, and that's it. Notice that FK and KF in each triangle are congruent, so let's write that down. FK in one triangle is congruent to KF in the other triangle. By what property? The reflexive property of congruence. So we mark that. When we mark one, we mark both. Now we've got two pairs of sides. And we could try to find FL is congruent to KG. However, when we investigate that and try to figure out some way that these two can be congruent to each other, of course they're not given congruent to each other and there's no way we can come up with the fact that they might be. So we look for, it looks like SSS is out. Now let's try SAS, side angle side. If we had an angle in between the two sides that are in question, this one right here, and this one right here, angle GFK and angle LKF do correspond to each other if these are congruent. So we're going to show, or try to show, that these two angles here are congruent to each other. They're not given congruent, but there is a reason for it. So let's go ahead and write the statement first, and we'll talk about the reason. That's angle LKF. LKF is congruent to angle GFK. And some, some people can already see it. If you have a hard time seeing it, notice these are parallel. If we extend the parallel sides like this, and then we use FK as a transversal like this, and try to ignore all the other parts to it, you can see we've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And this angle here and this angle here are special kind of angles. And if the lines are parallel, those special kind of angles are congruent. What are those angles? Alternate interior angles. And so the alternate interior angles theorem is what we use to show that those two angles are congruent. Now that we have We've got the angles, the pair of angles in between the two congruent sides when we can use SAS to state that triangle FGK 
is congruent to triangle KLF. We didn't use SSS and we didn't have to show all six pairs of angles and sides congruent by the definition of congruent triangles. We were able to use the side angle side congruence theorem postulate, excuse me. And so these are congruent triangles as the engineering company claims and therefore support the roller coaster.